Hi everyone, it's me again, Tulio Sergusa with Dojo Live. I'm at GBTA 2019 in Chicago. It's a big show, very noisy, so bear with us today. I have with me Renee Prosk, who's a, a CEO, founder of Prosk, and he's gonna to talk to us about meeting management, event management technology, and, and a few other things. But let's get started by you introducing yourself and telling the audience who you are and a little bit about your background. Thanks so much, Julia. Really appreciate it to be here. Great show at the GBTA. It's good to be here as a company. My name is Rene Prosky. I'm CEO of also a company called Prosky. As you can tell, this is not a coincidence. We're a family-owned business. My father started the company and my grandfather actually started the company. I took over from my dad and now my dad 10 years ago wow. uh, handed over the company to me. So third generation, which is quite exciting. To say. Very exciting. That's the second uh, family owned business I'm talking to today. That's a, it's a theme in the travel space. That's I suppose. what we do. <laughs> so tell us, tell us a little bit about your background. So you very much have, have, have been with Prosky your entire career. Tell actually, us about what it is. What is the company yeah. a goal so, and its purpose? Actually, I, I started off in business travel myself before moving into our company's business. So I was an actual travel agent booking travel for our customers for a large German business travel agency. Then I did some marketing in, uh, in the finance industry and then I joined the family business. So after already making my first steps and beginning my career, and actually my family wanted that, you know. Yeah, I'm thinking your father was like, go learn and yeah, screw up somewhere that, else. That's it. And then bring some of that. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's smart, smart. Yeah, your yeah. dad's a smart man. And to be honest, and I, maybe I can share this, my wife's actually pregnant now with the fourth generation. So we're working on having four generations of Frosties running this business. Wow, so that's I hope amazing. My child as well wants that. That's Very amazing. Good. I can only imagine what the business is going to evolve to then. Yeah. But let's talk about what it is now for the, the, for sure. the sake of the audience. Tell us something about the business. So uh, from the beginning, from my grandfather's times, we always worked in meetings and events, focusing on delivering value for marketing-driven organizations, but also other organizations that handle internal meetings, but it's always uniquely meetings and events. So we don't do any travel, but obviously travel is a big aspect of meetings and events. So that's why we're also part of the Radius Network. We're here at the Prosky booth within the Radius stand. Let's just show everybody a little bit where we are. It's a lot going on here. This is the Radius Travel booth. So that's a pretty cool big deal to be a yeah. part of their network. You'll have to tell us a little bit of how that came about. I will. But so we organize and plan meetings. We help organizations, our organizations source meetings. We, we also help with the creative. That means creative content, design, graphics, and obviously also around the technology. So that be, means audiovisual, but also marketing communication. That means how do we get the content from the company to the end user. And we know technology, you know, you can't take technology away anymore from how things and products are marketed. So how are you doing that today? How have you adopted technology to help the company evolve? Obviously it's different than what it was when Absolutely. your grandfather started or when your dad ran it. Absolutely. So I'm assuming you're the one who's introduced technology. Tell us a little bit about that, that evolution. So there's, there's two sides to the technology. One side is we make the actual project management more efficient using technology for the participant management, for booking the travel, for getting people from A to B, uh, requests for proposals for hotels, for example. All of that is automated, which obviously saves our customers time, gives them the duty of care needs they have, or fulfills the duty of care needs they have, any compliance needs and reporting needs. On the other hand, you have technology that is used with the marketing. So I go to an event, I have an event app nowadays, I don't have a syllabus anymore, um, question and answer sessions are done through technology but also the way for example technology is used in order to market a product itself if you go to a trade show normally or the last hundred years you had static banners somebody printed something and you had a message there and then somebody talked to that message that maybe was printed on a banner well nowadays with augmented reality and virtual reality people can actually immerse themselves in their product and the products of the client. For example, we've got VR glasses here where, where I can show you meeting designs or meeting rooms we've designed so you actually can step into the room we've designed for a client. Now, instead of showing you a brochure, you're stepping into the actual product that we've created. 
So you're using augmented reality, virtual reality, as a means to present Correct. to a potential a customer Correct. what the space would look like, Correct. what concept they could create. Yeah. That sounds amazing. How is that changing or re revolutionizing the meetings business, the ability of to what you're doing? How is that serving customers differently? A lot. Again, there's two perspectives to that. One, technology is changing the way meetings and events are organized. A lot is automated. And my hope is that in, in five to ten years, none of the manual work will be necessary anymore. We will then be able to focus on the marketing aspect, on the communications aspect, and we don't will not have to send Excel sheets around anymore. So that's one one side. On the other hand, it's changing, for example, pharmaceutical industry. How do you show what a uh, shot you get does within the system, within your body. You, it's hard to show that. Well, with virtual reality, for example, you can now follow the track of the product, how it goes through your body and what effects it has in your body. And you can show this by animating that in, in VR. This is just an example how the way content is communicated is changing. I'm curious. Could that be used some someday to actually enable virtual meetings where Absolutely. people actually never leave their home, but they have a uh, uh, an experience, an immersive experience where they're actually there? Is that something that's in the it's pipeline? How, yeah. How's that? We're using uh, telepresence robots, for example. You might know that um, it's it's like an iPad on a stand on wheels. Mm -hmm. It will go back and forth, and you steer that from home. That means you could have it running through here, go through the trade show, interact with people, but you're sitting back home. Now, if you add a 360 degrees camera to that robot, you actually, with your VR glasses, can participate in 360 degrees. The robot's got a microphone, and it's, it's also got uh, loudspeakers, so you can hear what people are saying. People can hear you when you talk. You can change the height, so if somebody's sitting down like we are now, you can lower it to be on the height of the person, when you want to walk to the or drive to the next booth, you just drive off and go to the next one, but you are steering it with your computer from home. What I'm hearing is of incredible possibilities, for example, with people with handicap. Right? Where, where they may be homebound, they are not as Absolutely. mobile. And let's face it, quite often they miss out on being at an event like yeah. this. And so is that the target market or is that just one of the target market? Who is the actual customer that would take advantage of this right now? Again, this goes both ends. So it's a, the participant who may not fly across the globe. I came to Chicago from Munich, Germany. It was a long trip to be here, but for me it's got value because I'm meeting people for the first time. I'm trying to sell my product. And you're I on guess. Dojo Live. Yeah. It's great, Chicago pizza, I mean, you know, people told me it's great. So this is the stuff I get to try. On the other hand, look at the top executive, a C-level executive of a company. He's supposed to present a 30-minute presentation somewhere. Um, you can roll him in and he can be part of the thing, uh, of the event, but he doesn't have to physically go to all of these different events. So people can actually use their time more effectively. So again, it's a participant, but it's also on the organizer's side that you have a lot of advantages. Yeah, I love that. I mean, when I was younger, I remember one time I was in four cities in one day. I could not do that today. I would probably collapse. But the idea of being able to participate and do multiple meetings in virtual reality rooms, it's very compelling. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your journey, you know, in terms of Adopting new technology, it sounds as though you've gone, you know, emerging technology, sure. pushing the envelope, if you will. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit how you're validating what your customers want. You've had customers for three generations. Yeah. How do you go about validating what they want, what they want, the value that they want, and delivering on that? The best way to do that is to see whether an initiative has measurable value. So there's nice gimmicks you can put up. You can have now, I can design a great virtual reality experience or whatever it may be for you, but can I measure that it has brought me any value at my booth, at my marketing meeting, at my sales meeting? If I can actually measure the value, then it's an initiative, or, and it, it proves that it's valuable, either to my bottom line, or to my brand experience, or brand exposure, then it's been a successful initiative. If you can't measure it, how are you going to know what, what effect it's going so to have? So are you providing tools where 
uh, clients can actually measure Correct. the effect. So this is the first. How does it work? How does that work? That's the first part. So the client says we're going to invite 500 of our uh, salespeople. We want to communicate a new strategy, a new message. Okay. We want to show our products in the best way possible, but we also want to make sure that people learn something. So the first thing we do is we sit down with the client and say, what exactly do you want to get out of it? And then we design the way there. And at the same time, we um, design the or, or establish the points how they can measure it. For example, by a test afterwards or like a, a survey, by maybe social media feeds, if it's not an internal meeting, but an external meeting like this one, how many people were actually at my session, uh, what was the engagement at the session with the polls, all of that. And from that then, you can tell, okay, we had five different initiatives, three had 50% of the people interacting, two had 20% of the people interacting, and by that you actually see which of the initiatives are being affected. It sounds to me like you're reinventing the meeting and event space for the better. Um, I, I would, I would hope to be able to say that I have to be a bit more modest because we're not the only ones that are doing a good job in that. But our motto in the company is making the complex simple. That's our claim as a company. So meetings and events are a very complex thing. You need a partner that makes it simple for you so that you can focus on what you do best. And at the same time, my personal motto is let's transform our industry. So things are changing and evolving in the industry. Some people are scared of that. For me, it's the greatest opportunity we've had in many, many years in our industry. And I want to jump, jump right on it. And keeping in mind, I have a fourth generation coming, so I'm, I might better make sure I leave the business behind that's, that's successful and it's thriving when the fourth generation is ready. Do you see this becoming a hybrid solution as well? So for example, let's say in the fashion space, yeah. there's a fashion show in Milan. Yeah. And usually it's reserved for certain fashion icons, people that go there, sure. but the regular individual wants to participate or wants to see it, and they're not going to fly to Milan for it, nor, sure. nor do they care to do that, but they would love to participate and maybe get a glimpse. Do you see this being adopted in such a way where you have both the physical and the virtual? Absolutely. How could that work and what, what opportunities would that create? Look at the gaming world, what's happening in the gaming world. Uh, immersive games are the ones that are that are most successful at the moment. Why? Because people become part of a whole world in the community. And the same ha will happen in marketing. More and more products will be marketed in a much more immersive way. People are going to fully go into, one, the community, but two, also the brand. So brands will do a lot in order to make sure that people are immersed in the world they are trying to create. Sounds exciting. So let's shift gear a little bit. Tell us a little bit about the company culture. Sure. Uh, it's family owned and operated for three generations, soon fourth generation. Congratulations. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, tell us a bit about the culture. How are you, to build something like this, you need to have some amazing people supporting you, behind you, with you. What's the culture, what's the guiding principles of the culture in the company that's making it possible to attract really great employees that want to continue working? Yeah. So, we're a headquarter, Germany headquartered company, so that says a lot about the way we work. But also, we're a very, very diverse company. We, we speak 13 languages, we've got offices over here in the US as well. And we're a very um, broad culture, but at the same time, the family part is the most important. So that's around loyalty, around integrity, around doing the right thing. And customers nowadays have a big choice as to who they want to choose. And at the same time, we see things on a long-term perspective. That means, you know, winning a customer just for the next quarterly or uh, yearly result is not going to work for us. So our relationships are long-term. That's with the customers, that's with the suppliers and partners, but especially also with the employees. And, and in the end, that may be more expensive, or that may be make us a bit um, different than some of the extremely dynamic partners. But because we're reliable, because we're honest, and because people like being with us, the, the glue our clients and our staff have is a lot stronger. And that makes us very successful. And meetings and events is a very volatile and fast moving business. And here we are three generations later and we're still very, very successful. And I'm trying to advocate that also on the, I'm on the GBTA meetings committee for Europe, for example. 
We're doing a lot of industry work also with the German uh, Business Travel Association and meetings and events, uh, the German Convention Bureau, things like that. Showing that by doing business in a sustainable way, when you do good for your people, when you do good for your customers, when you're really an honest partner, not just a supplier, it actually pays off. Well, that's fantastic. It sounds like the kind of culture that uh, that's very attractive. It is. Uh, you mentioned something that resonated with me. The sponsor of the show, Dojo Live, is Nearsoft, and one of their key values is long-term relationships. And it's one of the reasons they have a, a very low attrition rate and very committed long-term associates. I don't even call them employees, but it's a very different culture. It's. It sounds to me corporations could learn some things from family-owned businesses. Yeah. And what, what what are some of the lessons you have learned coming from the corporate world when you first started and then moving into the family business? What are some of the things you have learned along the way about yourself that you'd like to share? So I, I learned that um, if I want to be a good leader, I need to make people grow because they, in the end, are going to push me and the company up as well. Right? I think if you micromanage, that's a problem. The business needs to be able to operate without me. If, if it doesn't, I'm making some sort of mistake. If I need to be involved in every single aspect of it, I'm, I think I'm doing something wrong. So I really want to empower people. I actually live my private life is in Portugal, like companies in Germany. So I go to the office once a month. We've got a third of, well, 20% of our employees, 25% of our employees work fully remote. Um, we've got a great trust culture. And I don't need to be in the office every day to check everything because it's not necessary. People are empowered. And by being empowered, they produce better because they want to, because they make it their own. So I'm very fortunate to be able to concentrate on the strategic part, on the development part, and growing our business, not only for myself, but also for everyone that works for us and for our clients. Sounds like a co-managed and co-ownership environment. Very much, companies that are looking for future work ideas and tips should probably reach out to you because you've <laughs> cracked the code. Um, yeah, I wish. <laughs> I, I think it's amazing when you give people freedom and really, we say when you treat people as adults, right? You yeah. trust them to be able to do their job well. Um, let's, let's shift gear a little bit about the future. Why are you here, GBTA? What are you looking to accomplish? What's yeah. next for your business? So, um, because we work in strategic meetings management, that means not only event by event, but event programs that are being developed across organizations. And these programs are often combined with transient travel programs, because companies have seen that there's a lot of value in bringing those two buckets together, because often they're related. So for us, it's a great um, forum because there's many people that do both, travel and meetings. And we want to be here, one, with thought leadership through the GBTA committees that, for example, I'm part of. But on the other hand, also showing in the industry where we can go and where people, uh, what people can aspire to. So we really want to be innovators. But at the same time, not everything is always innovative. You know, there's some things, it's the, the bread and butter stuff as well. And that needs to be managed properly as well. So having this combination between everyday bread and butter business and the, the innovative and the creative stuff on the other hand, that's why we're here at GBTA, because the people here look at things from a more global perspective. They manage programs, not individual travel or individual events. So they need to have this perspective and we try to bring this to people. That's great. As we're wrapping up, love to hear some words of wisdom. Let's fast forward 20 years, and you're you're expecting. You say you're. Is it? A, you know what it is? No, not yet. On Friday, actually, okay. we've got the next scan. Okay. My wife's gonna kill me if she knows that I'm saying all of this. <laughs> okay, I'm very so, excited. So you can tell. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So let's fast forward, and your child is now an adult. Yes. And you're sharing with him or her the wisdom of what you've learned building a business, uh, specifically a growing a technology business. What would be some of those words of wisdom you would share? Keep humble. I think if you're too proud and you think too much of yourself, it will, it will come back to you. If you are humble, you always will look for the next thing. If you're too proud and you think you've got it all covered, that's when people are going to overtake you left, right and center. 
So a good business model, be humble. Good quality of a good leader, be humble. Those are great words of wisdom. Anything else you'd like to share with the audience before we, uh, we part ways today? Um, I'm very grateful for uh, the time I had with you, Tulio. I think meetings and events has got a lot of potential because the way marketing is done nowadays is really going to change. Let's use all these different opportunities that technology gives us. And to those who are scared of all of these changes, don't be scared because it's a fantastic opportunity for each and every one of us, but we just have to embrace it. It's been a pleasure talking with you and thanks for being my guest today. Thank you very much. And good luck at the Great show. Pleasure.